Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. Lou and Sherry of the Lou Everett Group are here as guests with us today, and they are known for their highly effective coaching, teaching, and speaking on the importance of personal growth and how it impacts our influence as a leader. With more than four decades of combined experience in training, coaching, and leadership, they also have received training and mentoring from well-known and successful coaches and teachers from the likes of Tony Robbins, Zig Ziglar, Brian Tracy, John Maxwell, Jack Canfield, Paul Martinelli, and our certified leadership coaches and corporate trainers. Would you please help me in welcoming the owners of the Lou Everett Group, Lou Everett and Sherry McManus. Welcome. Awesome. Well, thanks for having us, Kathy. (laughs) We're excited to be here. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm really glad that you said it was four decades of combined experience because mm-hmm. I was like, I don't think you guys have been alive for four decades. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm Did glad you that you when think you were so. Five? I'm glad that you think so. I, I I I have been alive for more than four decades. So okay. I, I'm glad I'm glad you think we don't. Uh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. You you look very young, very young, very youthful, which is awesome. So. I'm, you know, I'm just always curious because this is not a strength I have. I'm always curious how people and why people got started, especially as a couple. That's mm-hmm. the part I am challenged to do. <laughs> My husband and I worked together for all of one week before I said, oh, no, <laughs> this isn't going to work. <laughs> so tell us, tell us all about it. <laughs> Well, it's all because of Sherry being able to deal with me, really. That's what it comes down to. You know? I understand that. I would have had yeah. to deal with my husband because he won't go and deal with me. <laughs> yeah, well, here, and, and uh, Sherry has, uh, can tell you a lot about this, too. But we, Sherry and I have been, well, when we got married in 2000, and we've been together since 2005. And uh, one of the, believe it or not, one of the first things that we did uh, within months after after um, a meeting and, and being together, we started our own business. <laughs> uh, and uh, the business in 2005 that we owned, and we owned that for about a year and uh, ended up ended up realizing that that really wasn't as much of our passion as we thought it was that type of business. And that'll make or break a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> So we learned a lot. We, we did. We learned, you know a lot about we, each other. we learned a lot. And we were re- the, the good parts. Uh, honestly, it was the fact that, hey, you know what? We have strengths that we complement one mm-hmm. another. Um, and that was the beauty of like, oh, wait a minute. And it was a, it was a rough gamut. But at the same token, there was really power in in what we were doing. Mm-hmm at that time that was like, wow, maybe we can, we can build yeah. something, you know, yeah, you, if you want to know so. if you're going to stay together for a while as a couple start a business. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm telling you, I can't even imagine. Yeah. Well, we re- I realized very quickly, we realized very quickly, like this, this, we can do this. This, this is going to work. Uh, we had a lot of learning to do, of course, in certain areas, but, uh, uh, but we learned at, at that moment that we were, we were good working together. Mm-hmm. And we quickly became known as a power couple because of the business that we owned and, and just mm-hmm. because of being in business together and because we work well together. Um, and so it's, uh, it's, it's always a challenge because you're different people. Um, and one of the things that we love to do as coaches is we provide um, a leadership personality assessment that we offer. And that, and that assessment helps to kind of identify, as opposed to being identified as the, as the result of the assessment and identify strengths that, that you can capitalize on and communicate with the person that you're that you're partnering with or that you lead. And so we took that and said, you know, let's use this as a guide to help us as a couple and as business partners to capitalize on strengths. So Sherry's like, well, that's why when I say it this way, it doesn't work <laughs> for you. And, you know, and I'm the same way. I says, well, that, I'm saying it the wrong way to get the to, to have Sherry uh, feel good about what she's doing and performing. Um, and we realized that 
the things, some of the things that I was doing, I hated doing in the business. And some of the things that Sherry was doing, she hated in the business. And then I was like, but I like doing that stuff. <laughs> she was, well, I like doing the stuff that you do. So we swapped it. Uh, oh, <laughs> and it makes a big So what difference. do you guys do now? How do you separate who does what now? That's almost becomes natural now. <laughs> it took a while, but yeah, so I do a lot of the, the networking, uh, one-on-ones, building rapport with our with uh, potential clients or even referral network, you know, building that rapport. It's mm-hmm. something that we had to learn. You hear about it, but how well are you really doing it? Right. So I'm constantly learning and growing that way. Um, and we also, you know, we both speak on, mm-hmm. on, on topics together as well as separate. Yeah. Um, So he loves the content writing when it comes to our presentations, our webinars. And I, as he liked to say, I just need a point and click, you know, or point and go. (laughs) So I get all the gigs or at least I will try to figure out where's our our, what's next opportunity so that he can kind of uh, take a moment, write what we need to write. And I, I go to him going, okay, what part do I do? <laughs> well, I fit you in, you're and there. He fits and, me in and, and, and then, you know, we tweak it a little bit towards my, you know, my style or mm-hmm. my story. I just insert, insert one of my stories, let's say. So we blend it that way versus let's say somebody doing this on their own, they have to be everything, mm-hmm. right? They have to be the writer, the everything, you know, right. Put their own story. Oh, yeah. in. So luckily we Absolutely. both have stories um, mm-hmm. that he's really good of the, on the writing side and I can help us get us the opportunities, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah. so he's yeah. a good researcher too. So I, <laughs> I'm not I as good as him. But <laughs> so yeah, we find out what we, what yeah. we're good at, what we like to do. We then I'll go to Sherry and say, Hey, can you, can you help with this, this, and this, because that's not my passion. So I'm not going to give it a hundred percent. Whereas Sherry will, because she loves doing that part of the business. Um, uh, I love people and I love to network. My time is so, my, my bandwidth is so, uh, so tight, but Sherry's so good at it and people just um, uh, are connected to that. And why not, why not use those strengths? Right. And, and so that's, yeah. that's how I, I, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm jealous. I need <laughs> b- both of you guys to be on my team. <laughs> hey, we're here for you. Hey, we're here for you. Yeah. yeah we do. So tell, uh, others might be already listening like I wasn't going, I need you guys on my team. I need some of this. So what kind of people do you work with and what do you help them with? I know it's personal growth and becoming an inf- influencer as a leader, but talk a little bit more about exactly what you do to help people. Yeah, our, uh, uh, well, our tagline is transforming today's leaders. That's our mission. Mm-hmm. And uh, so the reality of it is we, we all are leaders in some fashion, right? In our family, um, as caregivers, as a wife, as a husband, uh, and, and in a business, if you own a business or you are in a role in a business, you're a leader as well. Because we believe that leadership is, it comes down to one thing, and that's influence. How we influence other people is really what defines what a leader is right? A good leader or a bad leader is all dependent upon how they influence other people and and what direction they influence other people in. So we we focus mainly on small business, small business owners, small businesses, all the way up from the owner of the the CEO and the C-suite level down to the teams um, and individual management within those teams. Uh, we, We are executive level coaches. We do have uh, clients that are individual solo entrepreneurs. However, their goal is to grow their business. There are some solo entrepreneurs that their goal is not to get teams or to hire people. They just want to be themselves for the rest of their, right. of their, of their ownership. Those, we can certainly help them with getting the leadership skills necessary. However, our focus and our specialty coming from our experience and our own proprietary empowerment method is to grow someone's, help somebody grow to a point uh, if they're at that level. And so we have clients that have started off with four clients and are now at 30 clients within a year, you know, 550, 600% growth in their business. That is really where uh, we can help those, those types of individuals, those solo entrepreneurs grow their business, them and maybe one other person. But then again, our sweet spot is being able to go in and help transform a team of people that may have had uh, spotty leadership or maybe 
new leaders that need some direction to find out how do I impact these people to really perform at the level I need them to, to get productivity. Mm-hmm. And it's so common for, you know, a new leader to be in a new leadership role. And they're like, congratulations, here's your team. Yeah. Uh, and, and then six months later, mm-hmm. they get fired because they didn't meet their metrics. Well, it's not their fault, partly, but mm-hmm. it's because the organization did not equip them. Right. So we're that we're, we're that solution to uh, for those soft skills, as most people recognize that, but we call them powerment skills. Powers, yeah. Power, power skills. skills yeah. Uh, because you need that. Not everybody knows. You don't know what you don't know, and, mm-hmm. and you and you need people. So we're very passionate regarding of put your ego aside. And allow and have them, you know, it's okay to ask for help. Yeah. Let someone um, fill that gap. Yes. Yeah, fill that. It's not out. us. We, you know, there's tons of other resources. Mm-hmm. I'm, you know, like we're not saying we're the only ones. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you know? yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's what we love to do. That's mm-hmm. our, we love mm-hmm. to see the results. And, and fortunately for us, we get them. Mm-hmm. But it comes to, that just comes from years of experience and failing and learning from failure and, and, and learning uh, from, from the, some of those that you mentioned in the leadership space, uh, we've mm-hmm. been directly coached and mentored by those people. And so it's, um, that's when you realize, man, I got a lot of work to do when you when you, get, <laughs> when you choose to get mentored or coached by people like that, right? Yeah, um, yeah. they're the cream work. of the crop. That's for sure. They're yeah. at the top of their game. They are. Yeah. They and, are. and it, here's something I want to really congratulate, congratulate you guys on, which is, as coaches, as coaches and trainers and empowerment leaders and influence, helping influencers become leaders and influencing, um, let me say all of those buzzwords again. No, kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you have had your own coaches. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you run into this periodically where there are coaches who don't have coaches. And I yeah. tell people, oh, yeah. it, when you're looking for a coach, if they don't have a coach, run because they don't really believe in coaching so congratulations to you guys on investing in yourselves to gain that knowledge and that experience to work with those top level coaches yeah well thank you for that and you know what i'll be honest with you you know and we have about five coaches we have five (laughs) coaches specifically (laughs) for different areas of our business and our life and um and it wasn't until um and I'm sure Sherry agrees with me on this and I'll, you know, she can say, but it wasn't until I said, I've got to have, I've got to have a coach. I've got to have somebody that is going to not just mentor me. There's a difference between a mentor and a coach, a significant oh, difference. Yeah. Yeah, but a Will coach you talk that, about that a little bit too? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. You know, but the, so I, it wasn't until I got a coach and I realized, man, this is awesome. And, and someone who really is a, a fit, right? Once you've, I've had coaches that haven't been a fit. It happens. And then you realize, well, wait a second. That's, you know, but then you, you make those adjustments as you grow. Right. Um, and so, and, and we're the same way. We're not, we're, I may not be a fit for everybody and that's okay for us, we, <laughs> but that's okay. Still come to us and talk to us because we might be able to have, find someone that is a fit for you. We have a very large network and we have no problem doing that. It's, we don't have competition. We work together for the, I believe in that. We believe in that hundred percent, but so, what do you, what is your take on that? I mean, when it comes to having coaches, it's, it's, uh, yeah, we can pick up the phone and and, let, and, and get on a call. You know, we can send an email to our sales coach. We can, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that's really big. It's good that. because it, it's, we get caught up and as business owners, and I'm sure, it, you know, the audience, you know, that's listening to this, they get, we, we all do, we get caught up in the weeds. We get mm-hmm. caught up in the day to day fighting fires every day. And then we don't make movement in actually our business. Mm-hmm. Um, we're busy, yeah. but we're too busy being busy. Yeah. Uh, but of what? That's right. <laughs> and yeah. I, I, I get sucked in that trap time and done and I have to step back and then I got to replug myself in, mm-hmm. um, you know, pick up the phone or go into a teaching of right. some, you know, to really kind yeah. of like, okay, listen I'm over to a listen to, yeah, them. listen to a mastermind, from something to get me refocused. And then because as soon as I get that little bit of that tweak a little bit, I'm, I'll, I'll be right back on track. Right? Yeah, just a redirection. Just seeing it from that. someone else's perspective. Yeah. You know, someone outside the picture can mm-hmm. see in. Exactly. Know? Somebody Big not difference. too close to it that you can't even see anymore. 
Because right. I know, I totally hear you, Sherry. That's exactly what I've experienced is when a, I'll have a coach and she says something to me and I'm thinking, why didn't I see that? Right. It's because I'm too close to it. That's right. right? You're too Once they it. see yeah. it and reflect it to you, you're like, oh, of course. Right. Mm-hmm. But you could <laughs> never have seen it for yourself because you're too close. That's right. Right. They have to, a coach is, 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 pulls you out of the picture, pulls you out of the center, but not, you know, in, 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 it's in a way that the questions that are asked to, to show you a different perspective, right? And then all of a sudden, like, man, like mm-hmm. you said, I saw this very differently about two seconds ago, <laughs> you know, and it happens yeah. like that. You know, it's funny. I know. Because, there's a story, if, if you would like, I'd like to tell you. Oh, I love stories, story. please. <laughs> There's a, 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 a client of our, we call our clients partners. So if I say the word partner, that's who I'm referring to is our clients because okay. we partner with people cool. in their success. It's not independent. Um, if they don't succeed, we don't. And that's just, and it sounds cliche, but it truly is that way with us. Um, so he, he was telling me this story and I've told this a couple of times and it just so funny, it, but it, but it, it connects directly to coaching once I heard him tell the story. So he, he had gotten a call. He owns his own business. He's, he's, a, he's successful um, and he's going through, he's creating pro- program and he's just going through some really good things. And he had told me on one of our sessions, he, that he had gotten a phone call from a friend of his and says, Hey, so-and-so and I, and we're going to go camping uh, and, and we at Hatteras Island. And we'd love to, we'd love to have you come with us. It was kind of a last minute phone call. It was, uh, during, it's like a Thursday and he looked at his calendar and says, I've got some things I got to do. So he says, nah, maybe not this time. He's all right. Well, if you change your mind. Uh, and so he goes down and talks to his wife says, you know, so-and-so called me up. Why don't you go camp? And he goes, I don't, he's not a camper, by the way. Like he doesn't have camping gear. He's not a camper, but he likes to try uh-huh. new things and experiment and things mm-hmm. in life. And his wife says, well, why don't you just go? What you, what, what do you have on your schedule that maybe you can move he thought about it. He says, you know, I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to go try. I'm going to go try this. So he calls his friend back and says, you know, what? I'm coming. I'm going to get in the car, but I, I got to get some gear because I don't have any. Gear. I got to get a sleeping bag, a tent. I don't have any of that stuff. And his friend says, oh, don't worry about it. Just come all out here because right about five miles up the road uh, here is is a, is is a store where you can go get that. Right. It's like a, a, a Bass Pro Shop. And so he says, all right, cool. So then he's driving down, um, but says, you know what, just in case I'm going to stop at, in, in, you know, at this Walmart. And so he stops at this wall, pulls in a parking lot, stops at this Walmart, goes in uh, to get a sleeping bag. And at least let's so all get that. And then I'll get the tenant at, at the, at the best pro shops. So he goes in and, and uh, to the, to the aisle for the camping and all that the outdoor life area. Uh, and there it's completely empty. <laughs> Except, you know, because obviously it's on the way to this campground, probably. But he has one little sleep. So everybody bag stops in there. there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He was, it's pretty much all empty. And so he's like, well, all right. Um, I'll just wait and I'll go. I'll just get it all there. So maybe I can get what I really want. So he goes all the way down, gets to the gets to the campground. He's like, all right, this is going to be awesome. It's beautiful out. Uh, all right. Where's his Bass Pro Shop at? He puts it in the his GPS and realizes that there is no Bass Pro Shop in the area. And his, his, uh, his friend says, oh, man, I must have made a mistake. I thought there was one down the road. <laughs> so on the GPS, it was the Walmart was the closest one. So he goes trucking back to Walmart and realizes Eyes a little bitty sleeping bag. <laughs> and he ends up getting a, this sleeping bag that, you know, uh, that fits him barely, maybe. Right. But he gets one, he just pulls the one sleeping bag, got no tent and uh, says, well, I guess I'm going to sleep outside. On the, on the, he's like, I get to sleep under the stars and see the moon. This is going to be beautiful. Yeah, so he's really excited about it. So he, he, the night comes and it gets dark and he lays out. He looks up at the stars and he says, you'd never believe how beautiful it was. All the stars. He says, it just was it's a really, really amazing experience. But then he says, at one point, the, the, the moon came out and he says, it was so bright. And it was so bright, it was piercing my eyes. He goes, I couldn't (laughs) sleep because it was so bright out there. (laughs) He says, and he struggled. He's finally, you know, I've got to move. And right right about, oh, 10 feet or so beyond him, there was uh, like a a chalet of sorts where he could, there was an overhang. So he went and he moved his sleeping bag under the overhang so he can block the light so he can at least get some sleep. Starts falling asleep. And within minutes, the wind just starts to howl. 
the wind just picks up and billows and it's nighttime. So it's becomes a little cooler. Really cold. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so he, and, and, and where he was laying, was laying in such a way where the air, the wind was blowing right into the top of his sleeping Ooh. bag. So it was freezing him sleep. And he's just sitting there. He says, he's just freezing. He says, I was just dealing with it. He goes, it'll go, the wind will calm down. And he's dealing with it for hours. <laughs> He goes, finally, at about four o'clock in the morning, I had, I, I, you know, uh, three o'clock in the morning, something like that. He says, I went to my truck because I didn't want to sleep in the truck. I want to experience outside, but I got all of my, my clothes and so I started stuffing it down inside the sleeping bag and uh, I just laid it back and he goes, and it's just finally he, he gave up and he got up because I'm just going to get up. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to fight the wind anymore. So he gets up and gets ready to put his stuff away. And he stands back and he looks down and says, he laughs and says, why didn't I just turn the sleeping bag the other direction so that the wind wouldn't come inside? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's coaching. That's how coaching is. We pull you out of the picture so that right. you can see and what the situation yeah. really is so that you can pivot a different direction. Right. Does that make and sense? that's how simple it can be sometimes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. A great analogy and a yeah. true story. That's awesome. It is. Did a guy ever go camping again? I, I asked him that. He says, probably. That's, all right. Well, there you go. There you go. And, 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 he, and I got permission to use his story because I, I said, I've got to be able to use his story. And it wasn't until he told yeah, me that's that. A great said, story. That's just like coaching. Yeah. He bought it by yeah. this. He's, he's, a, he's a real estate coach. And he says, man mm -hmm. you're right that's a great analogy <laughs> <laughs> but that's exactly um, what it is that we do yeah yeah it, you know the other thing that makes me think of is um when he said no first because he had meetings scheduled <clears throat> one of the things that my husband frequently reminds me of when i say i can't do whatever because i'm too busy he's like hmm i wonder who your boss is wonder if they'd let you Right, right. <laughs> we'll put in, put in some PTO. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm like, oh, you're right. You're right. Why, why don't, you know, duh, yes. I get to change my own schedule if I choose to, right? Right, right. So a lot of people get caught up in that, just like you were talking about, Sherry, with a uh, busyness. Yeah. No. Yep. So. I, mean, I call that. Well, thank you, for sh thank you for sharing. We get caught up in we So wacky. back. <laughs> Yeah. That's what we do. Mentor versus coach. Let's go oh, back yeah. to that one. What's mm -hmm. the difference in your opinion, Lou and Sherry? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Want me to take that? Um, I, I can do one that? and then you go can do the it. other one. Yeah. So, so the, the mentor is, you know, as we mentioned, there's a two, you know, it is very different. Mm -hmm. Mentor is, if I correct me if I'm wrong, um, get this straight now. You got this. I know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is where the best is when that person is in a similar industry but ahead of you mm -hmm. where that's more relatable they know the the pitfalls mm -hmm. they've been through some you know trials and tribulations of themselves that they can help you ride that out yeah, they, like, they hey, give you suggestions and right. just tell you step by step mm -hmm. you know they kind of tell you what worked what didn't work for them that kind of thing yeah right right so really help in that and align a, 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 say a new person in that role or a new person in that industry, hey, this is what you need to to watch out for. Mm -hmm. Or just tell, you know, be where they are and then fill in your experience and your expertise to say, okay, this is something to to look out for mm -hmm. or to implement. You know, right. um, so that's that's the importance of a, a mentor. And sometimes, you know, people get confused uh, with mentor and coaching and counseling. I mean, there's there's there is a distinction. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, so that's that's for a mentor. And if you want to go for coaching. Yeah. So <laughs> so as Sherry said, the mentor is someone who's been in that experience. Mm -hmm. They've owned that same type of business. They have that background. They've been in that industry. They're above you. They've, they're ahead of you from where you are. And you go to them for hey, this is what you should do, X, Y, Z. As a coach, we don't tell you what to do. <laughs> because, see, you are, you are the creator of your own empowered future. We aren't. Everyone's experience is different. We don't have to be in your industry. A coach does not have to be in your industry to be able to guide you in the process of seeing clarity. 
so a coach with the process of asking the right questions creates that clarity for you to make the decision for you to see the clarity of that's what I need to do. Because if you make that call, if you make that decision, then it's a commitment that you're making and you're learning through the process. And then we of course hold you accountable to make sure you get it done because you've made accountability is huge. Mm -hmm. Big. You know, if you coaching without accountability isn't coaching. That's, that's what I call a conversationalist. It's a, that's a paid friend. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. and, and that's fine. If you pay for your friends and have a conversation, that's okay. I'm not judging that, but, mm-hmm. but a coach is not, uh, is, is the, the you, having an accountability partner with mm-hmm. your coach mm-hmm. is a, is, is part of being a coach. That's a responsibility that you have. Mm-hmm. Um, I can give you an example of what I mean by that. Uh, sure, go ahead. A uh, real life example. We, we yeah, have a, that's a the partner. best kind. Yeah, <laughs> right. We have a partner, a client of ours who started with us. She's with us. Uh, she's going on her. Uh, she's been four months now. And she came to us. She's a she's a mom. She has two children, two young children. Um, she has she had started kind of she was toggling between owning two businesses. One was a baking. She loved, she's absolutely loved baking uh, all these sweet goodies and she's good at it. Trust me. We've bought her, we've bought her goodies. <laughs> and she's good at it. You had um, to taste test it. Oh yeah. That's what I said. I said, well, then you've got to try this before we can sign this agreement. I'm kidding. We didn't do that. But, um, uh, and then the other one was, uh, she's starting an accounting business be a bookkeeper and leading into CPA because she's getting her CPA license at the same time. And she really wanted to seek, seek her feet into that because she was already, she already had clients, a small group of, you know, their once a year kind of clients. So she had already gotten it going, but she really wanted to focus on that, but she loved doing the other one too. And it was quick. <laughs> Somebody placed an order, you get quick money and, you know, uh, yeah. but so through the process of um, our, our, the sessions that we had over the last four months, she realized that she needed to, and it was just the other day that the clarity just blew up for her. She's like, I got to, I've got to just look at that, the baking as a hobby. I can't invest my energy and time into that because I'm starting to get people inquiring about my accounting business because through our coaching sessions, that's the direction she was going. And so she's got attention. So she's gaining new clients, which is what the intent was. And so, okay. So we said, okay, so, um, what are you going to do then about that? She goes, well, I've got all this, I've got all the, uh, all my baked goods that I've, I put on this store, this, this bakery that I've, I'm paying to hold my goods and they're selling them for me there. And I pay her them every month. She says, but I, I really got to kind of remove that. I got to go there tomorrow. I got to let her know what's going on. And I just got to take that out of there and I'll just give my, you know, sell my stuff or give it away so that I can focus on the accounting business because I have all this stuff. Okay. So what time tomorrow are you going to go do that? She made the decision. I didn't tell her what to do. Sherry didn't tell her what to do. We worked with her together. So she went the next day. And she did exactly what she said she was going to do. And she calls up Sherry or sends her a text. I can't remember which one it was now. She did both now. Yeah. (laughs) She was so excited. She was so excited. She was excited. She She was was pumped because she She did it. Yep. She was so excited. And she told the circumstances to the the person. Mm -hmm. And she said, okay, to the business business owner. And said, okay, well, Let's uh, so they ended up buying um, a significant amount of the product. So the bakery bought her product, bought her product to, to awesome. keep it there and keep it going. And then when she explained that she was going to do more focus on her accounting, she was, well, we happen to need an accountant for awesome. our, our bakery. So she yeah. was absolutely tickled pink yeah. and she, they were yeah. going to set up an appointment to talk about that and see what their needs were. Um, and she has an appointment set up. Uh, with the owner yep. and, and to dial in what their, what their needs are as uh, the accounting portion of See, it. Action. So. <laughs> action is yes. action is what action is what breeds results. And she Absolutely. took the movement, not knowing what was going to happen. And not only did she get her goods sold, <laughs> not expecting it. I mean, she literally went the next day and picked up a check for whoever, what it was from these people. And, and, mm-hmm. and now she has a potential client that she's going to be getting out of it at the same right. time for her accounting business. It's movement. Right. Once you see clarity, yes. it's moving. But if it wasn't for the accountability, yes. 
she may not have done it. That's right. Because you, I mean, everybody has a million ways to overthink analysis, paralysis, fears, yeah. uh, procrastination. If. Yeah. Yeah. Butts. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if you hold them accountable, what is it you're going to do? Great. Let me know how it goes. And then they do it. Yeah. I love that. I'm, I'm 100% behind you guys on this consistent mm-hmm. action is more important than anything. That's right. That's right. And having um, someone there to hold you, to, to hold your feet to the fire sometimes. Yes. Does anyone, anyone who works with us knows that if, if you set what we call them assignments, right? Mm-hmm. But if you set, if you mm-hmm. set a goal to say, all right, I'm tomorrow, I'm going to, I have a client, we have a, another business partner, a, a partner, a client of ours that at night, he, his goal is two nights a week to get to bed at 1030 instead of 230 in the morning because he's working in his business, oh in his company. God. And so he's his goal. I said, so his goal was to get to bed at 1030. So what do I do? All right. The next morning I said, so how did it go last night? Did you get to bed at 1030? Yeah. Right. Sounds sounds silly, but that's a goal because that's going to help his family. Absolutely. It's, it's a goal. Life balance, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then people that know yeah, us know everybody, like. everybody in my life knows I go to bed at 830. <laughs> Every wow. night I go to bed at 830. <laughs> and in wow. the winter, sometimes I sneak in it and go to bed at seven. Wow. <laughs> so what time are you up at like five? You know, or- um, one of the things I love about being um, a business owner is that I get to do whatever I want. And what I want to do is I don't want to wake up with an alarm. Yeah. And I love to sleep if you can't tell. <laughs> so um, going to bed at 830, you know, I think I, I'm really big on that's part of what a healthy lifestyle routine is, is going to bed at the same time every night. Mm hmm. And I'm um, getting a full like eight hours of sleep if you possibly can. But I go to bed at 830 and my dogs bark and wake me up uh-huh. at about 630. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Sometimes I'm already up, but most often I'm kind of laying there thinking oh, it's about time to get up and I hear the dogs bark. And I love that because then, you know, you probably seen the dogs going back and forth here. <laughs> my husband's taking a shower. If you saw one of them, just sit there real still for a minute and listen. He's trying to decide if my husband's done with the shower yet. <laughs> <laughs> and so they do that outside my bedroom door in the morning. And as soon as I move just a little bit, kind of waking up, 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 up yep. time to get up. <laughs> yeah, so, up. And how much more peaceful is that than having that alarm go off? I just, mm-hmm. that jarring alarm. If you can't yeah. tell, I had uh, way too many years at a corporate job where I had to have that alarm that went off at 4.30 every morning sure. and yeah. forced me to get up and get ready for a job I did not care for. Yeah. That's so um, there was something else you guys mentioned that I wanted to go back to. Um, you said, because um, this came up in a conversation I had yesterday, mm-hmm. you said something about failing and we're going to, you know, uh people fail and you move forward and you keep taking action and that kind of stuff. So mm-hmm. I totally agree with you on that. I mm-hmm. want to fail fast. I want to fail forward. The faster that I can take action, even if something doesn't work out, the faster I'm going to get to where, you know, I've learned from that and, you know, grow my business. Um, someone yesterday said to me, I just think that word fail is too negative mm-hmm. and I don't want to use it. Right. Yep. What do you guys we think about that? Of, what What do you say to people like that? Oh, sure. Yeah. We've heard that. We've, We've also heard, heard that. using the word hard. Don't, don't say it's too hard uh, mm-hmm. or, you know, don't use the word fail. It's too negative. <laughs> the reality of it is failing is failing. Mm-hmm. Whatever word you use, it still means the same thing. <laughs> it still means the same thing. It's not the word that's, it's not the word that you need to embrace. It's the experience that you need to embrace. Right, because I the like path, the, right, the path to take to get there, the, the 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 journey along the way, which includes failing or falling or not being successful, whatever you want to call it, it's all the right. same result, and you feel the same way. Right. No matter word you have to, no matter what word, it's call uh, it's, it whatever you want. <laughs> that's it. It's yeah. it's, it's it's the, the process and and the journey is 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 what you get to experience. That's that's what matters. Right. Right. And, and failing when you do fail and you, the the trick is, is, as you're saying, the trick is, is to learn from that failure. Now, now here's the tricky part (laughs) because what many of what many people do, and I'm sure somebody out there, I'm speaking to somebody out there right now today, what you do is 
is you fail or you feel like you failed and you don't do anything about it. You try to figure it all out yourself. And then you get, then you get deeper and deeper into the weeds. Your journeys takes yes. a little halt. You'd like, you're not getting where you want to be. You're not getting the results you're looking for. Mm-hmm. And you give up and you kind of, kind of hide yourself under the covers <laughs> and say, all right, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> and that's why yes. businesses fail. Yeah. And that's why teams fail. And that's why leaders fail. Mm-hmm. That's why leaders, you know, when they fall, they fall permanently. And they fall into their own habits because they believe that what they're doing is the right way, even though they've never gotten any assistance when they failed. Right. Uh, So that's the important thing. But the process along the way is the experience that really makes a difference in who you are and how successful you become. I've made, I can't tell you the failures I've made in, in my leadership experience that I've had to learn from times in my early career when I failed so terribly as a leader and decided I, I mean, I didn't think I needed any, I didn't need help. What I was doing was the right way to go. I'm the boss here. <laughs> do what I tell you to do. But we all have our blind spots. But we all have those big time. Mm-hmm. And my blind spot was humongous. <laughs> and I needed people to help me. Jerry, I love it that, that you were just so, so gentle and kind right there. We yeah. all have our blind spots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I knew she was talking about me. <laughs> but that we... Not Lou. Yeah. Right. We have our, have our blind spot. But, but of course, I identified with that one. I sure yeah. do. I think yeah. we all do. Mm-hmm. And when we admit it, right? When you just come to that realization that, you know, I just I just need to see it different. I need a different perspective. Well, I, I mean, just look at there. I, I do not know. And I don't believe there is any successful person in this world who has not failed and failed multiple times. I mean, look at who the richest man in the world is right now, Elon Musk. Oh my gosh. He's had very public failures, right? Yeah. Yeah, Big time. But did he learn from them and grow even bigger? Hell yes. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, like just go back in history, you know, any, any of those, any famous person, any success person, I mean, uh, you know, Thomas Edison is an example, you know, and, yes. and, you know, if, the, yeah. how many times did he <laughs> fail with his inventions over and over and over again? And, right. Um, but it's just right. the one time after keep moving in the direction he's supposed to move into. So it's, uh, yeah. there's no straight line to the top. And that's oh. real. There's no elevator that goes there. It's very dirt. It's very <laughs> jaggedy. And, and yeah. you know, it's, uh, it, can, it can, it can be, it can be messy. I choose to look at it as an adventure every day. Mm-hmm. and it is an adventure yes it is it gets my adrenaline going uh, it's more fun than going to disneyland yeah there you go there you go and, and you have to um, look at it that way you know when you and sometimes on adventures you stub your toe oh yeah and it hurts yeah you can get injured on adventures yeah. yes you can yes yeah. you can deeply yeah. some something else that, that you guys said that Um, I think is really important for people to hear in this era when you can get online and they feel like you can Google anything and learn anything online, Uh which is you don't know what you don't know. And when you don't know the question to even ask, there's no way that you can Google it and find the answer online. Right. So could you talk a little bit about that? Because I, I know, you know, I've heard those same people. I got this. In fact, my own husband, I cannot tell you the number of times, you know, he, he is, he calls himself a house husband. You know, some people have a housewife. I have a house husband. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So he takes care of all that part. And I have uh, the income, which I absolutely love because I was never a good housewife. Let me tell you. (laughs) And (laughs) he's a much better house husband than I was housewife. Mm -hmm. Um, Now I lost my train of thought. Anyway, (laughs) Uh, Oh, I know. He says to me, you, you know, everything you've been in business forever. You're doing great. Why would you possibly need more training or a coach? And I'm like, cause I don't know what I don't know about the next level up. That's right. That's right. So can you talk a little bit about that, about those people who think Mm -hmm. I got this, I, I, I'm smart. I can figure this out Mm -hmm. on my own. Yeah. <laughs> and you can to a point, mm-hmm. you know, you um, well, you, you, to a, you, know, to, you can to go a to a, until you get to the point where but you're stuck, you're stuck. It's that feeling of stuck and mm-hmm. you're spinning your wheels. And why am I not 
succeeding or why am I not going to that next level? Um, or why I, is so-and-so more successful than me? We right. started at the same start time. Comparing. Maybe you get comparing to people. Mm -hmm. Right. And we saw mm -hmm. self-sabotaging. Mm -hmm. um, there can be lots of mental blocks that you don't realize that are blocking you to whatever next you know, mountain that you could, that you could be for, to be successful. So all that type of feeling. So if you feel angst, if you feel that I, it's, I, I think it's universal to feel stuck at some point in your life. Oh yeah. And multiple times. Absolutely. I, I mean, I don't think anybody can deny the fact that like, I feel this weirdness and mm -hmm. I think I'm stuck, <laughs> you know? So, and just saying it out loud is half the battle and to be intentional. And we're all about being intentional. Uh, intentional living is we walk the walk when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. And, and that's the thing, it's an awareness, an awareness to be like, okay, when you start what we were just talking about, now what, mm -hmm. what, what do I need to do? Right. And that's why it's so important for coaching to mentor, um, you know, looking, looking for those options, because there are people there, you have to realize that there's going to be a people are always someone is always going to be ahead of you mm -hmm. and you and, need them there and you need them there. And yeah. I looked at early yeah. in my career thinking that that was frustrating because I was looking at somebody's, I hear this and it resonates with me. You're looking at somebody else's chapter 33 and you're only on chapter three. Mm -hmm. I paraphrase, mm -hmm. but I like you that. get my point. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I like that. And, need them there. Yeah. But we need them there. Yeah. And mm -hmm. if we didn't, how you, we would be, we wouldn't grow. Mm -hmm. So it's a mind shift. It's definitely something that you have to, you know, take a step back and realize, wait a minute, mm -hmm. I can learn. It's not a threat. It's not a ego, but mm -hmm. your ego's huge. You got to put it aside. Put, put it it aside. might be your ego, right? right. You got to put that one aside <laughs> for sure. Yeah, right? it might be. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That and feeling that you're talking, that Sherry's talking about mm -hmm. here, that feeling of stuckness. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at it from the perspective of that. That's an, that's a, we all have, we all, we all have that feeling over time in our life and in our career and our journey multiple times, perhaps. And, and that, that feeling of stuckness is really more of like an alarm for transition. Mm -hmm. That feeling is saying oh, it's time for transition. Mm -hmm. And that yes. transition needs something bigger than you many times to get you to the next step or next level. And we need mm -hmm. people in order to get there. Absolutely need people. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. um, um, I got another story if you want to hear it. Are you doing a pebble? Sure. Pebble that, in a shoe? That one, you can tell that oh, one. Oh, okay. I've got a different one. <laughs> okay. This one, this one is an experience that Sharon and I experienced. <laughs> okay. We, we, we um, uh, 2019, we attended the John Maxwell team conference because we're part of the team there. And we had a first time, I mean, I've been being, I've been mentored, we've been mentored by John Maxwell. I've been listening to John Maxwell since I was 12 years old. God bless my mother for that. <laughs> and, and so, and, and then, and then later on, as I got into, became an adult, I've, and became part of the John Maxwell team. We've, I've talked with John, we've been teaching with John, we've been taught with John. I finally got to meet him in person. So we were pumped. So we go to this conference and, and, and there was 3,200 people, uh, fellow coaches and speakers and trainers from the John Maxwell team. And we, we go and it was just an amazing event. And as we're sitting in the audience and we're watching some of these speakers get up and speak that are our coaches. These are our, these are coaches of ours, our speaker coach, or, you know, these are people that are, that hel are helping us and they're getting up there and speaking. Now I've been speaking since I was, since I was 10. I started speaking in, in front of a congregation at church when I was 10 years old, my parents were part of this faith that that was what you did. Mm -hmm. And so I've been speaking for years and, and, and I, but I get there and I'm watching these people, how good they were. And I started feeling really small, like this big, because they were so good. I'm like, these are so good. And in my mind, I'm thinking, how am I ever going to get that good? And then it dawned on me. I have to have them that good. I need people better than me in order for me to get there. <laughs> okay. Yes. And so that's yes. that's what's important about that is understanding that we have this gap that many times happens mm -hmm. to us as adults. As children, we're so mm -hmm. willing to learn new things from other people, but then we're conditioned over the years to mm -hmm. believe things that really aren't true. And yeah. we need to release those things in order to gain something new uh, and, and to gain that right. experience. 
you know. Yeah, I love that. So For true. Sure. And the pebble one, Sherry, oh. <laughs> I want to hear your pebble story. Yeah. So the pebble is that we share this when we have that sense of confusion to clarity. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we teach, we teach that. And there's, so there's like uh, five different ways of how to move from confusion to clarity, mm-hmm. but leading up to it is a, have you ever had, you know, you're out working in the backyard well, you're and, in the country. I know you've experienced yes. this. <laughs> and you, you have, a, you know, somehow a pebble got in your shoe and it's oh, yeah. an annoyance, right? It's you kind of shake it to the side. Um, you know, there's things that you can do. One of two things. One, take off your shoe and just shake it out. Get, ri- get rid of get that, rid of it. right? Or two, just mm-hmm. eh, I'll just shake it, you know, I'll move it around, and it doesn't hurt my foot so much. Mm-hmm. But I'll, I'll deal with it later. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. it's the exact same feeling as us as humans when we have that angst or stuckness mm-hmm. or a what recently I, I I learned about chronic pain versus acute pain. Yeah, mm-hmm. I have it. It's in my shoe. It's hurting my foot. But mm, now, if it would broke your your, your skin, let's say, Mm -hmm. or a a nail or something, then it turns into, oh my gosh, I have to get this out. Mm -hmm. I have to take off my shoe and get this, you know, get, get taken care of it. So with the confusion, the clarity is the, is the same way. It's those little annoyances, the little pebbles, we'll keep nagging and nagging. Mm, And it's actions that requires those, those two options. Yeah. You need action to remove that pebble. And right. And it's, yeah. it's, we, get, we get so comfortable mm-hmm. with with that nagging feeling. It feel for whatever reason, even yeah. though we complain about it, it's like, mm-hmm. well, mm-hmm. why are you why are you complaining about this stuckness <laughs> mm-hmm. one year later? Mm-hmm. The same stuckness, right? Because we haven't taken. Oh my gosh! Yes, <laughs> we haven't taken that. Oh, action. I, 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 and I'm sure you've seen that one year later, the same person will come back around and attend something that they attended the year before and they're nowhere further. And yeah. the next year they attend again and the year after that, and they're still in the same place. Yes. And at first I feel a little sorry for them. And then after a while, I just think that must be what they want their life to be like, because right. otherwise yeah. they do something about it. Right. And, and, you know, many times it's like you, like we've said in this conversation, they don't know what to do about it, but here's the other challenge. And I'm with, again, this is going to speak to somebody out there too, is they don't ask for help. Yes. There is this, there is this uh, men, especially, mm-hmm. but women too, especially <laughs> women power too. women, powerful women, yes. right? Because yes. you want to, and I get it. And I want that. Sherry's a powerful woman. That's why I love her. That's why we're together. That's why we work well together because she, she has the ability to influence people on that level and she's independent. And, and, and the challenge, but what's great about Sherry is she asks for help. And, and that's yeah. what makes the difference. We need to ask yes. for help. It's okay. Eliminate the ego and say, you know, I, I need to either research help, find help. If you don't know what to ask, go out to somebody and find it. There is somebody there that's going to be able to help you because they've been there before. That's right. So just that's be exactly okay right. with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you two, I could talk to you all day long. Oh my goodness. You are so full of incredible stories and knowledge. I know our listeners are feeling the same. So can you share with us, anybody that's like, I got to have more of the Everett group of the Lou Everett group. How do I do that? Fill us in. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. Fill it. Um, the Lou Everett group.com. And we also uh, we're on LinkedIn. We're on Facebook. Uh, follow us. We have great content out there. And we also have a free subscription for a motivational and quote on uh, every Tuesday in mm-hmm. your email. Ooh. So oh, Tuesday thought. I Tuesday love thought. that stuff. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, love, I love that stuff. Too. So mm-hmm. every Tuesday you get a very inspirational little message. So feel free to, to subscribe. It's, it's just an opportunity to share um, some real great and motivational information yeah, it keeps yeah. you engaged, engaged with us yeah. and so uh, that way you, you know what we're up to uh, mm-hmm. um, and uh, we'll give you that we'll give you that link so we put here in the chat for y'all um, or underneath this uh, this podcast uh, but just reach out to us yeah you know whoevergroup.com as sherry said facebook linkedin insta yeah. right instagram <laughs> we, we do that too we throw out some um, some quotes there for you for everybody just uh, reach out 
we don't, we want to hear from people. All right. We want, we just want to talk to people and do what we can to help you. There's no strings attached to that. So just feel free to reach out. And just from having this short conversation with the two of you, I can tell you really do have that heart. You really do want to help people. And I really love that about the two of you. You're so genuine. So I feel very fortunate to have gotten to interview you. I thank you so much for being here. Oh, well, thank you. I'm so glad that we had made connections again through rapport building and connections. And we got to meet you, Kathy. Yeah, thank you, Kathy. (laughs) Thanks for having us. Oh, you're very welcome. So, yes, check out the loueverettgroup.com. And those links that they just talked about will be in the show notes. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. (laughs) 